You like it? <clears throat> so what happens? Predictions? We're not quite there yet. Say again? No, go ahead. All right. <laughs> Hair color, object, HTML development. Now, who knew that's what it was going to do but was afraid to say? Some of you knew that's what it was going to do. I bet you did. Why? Because the result of render color is the actual div. So it's the actual div that's going to get passed to render list item as the value. And we're going to set the text content to contain that. And when converted to text, that's what that div looks like. Well, shucks. What can we do about this? What's one quick and dirty way that we can overcome this problem? We've done it before. We want a string here. How can we take that div and make it a string? Yes. Outer HTML. Outer HTML. Look at the big brain on Steve. So render color dot outer HTML. Steve deserves a fancy hair color for that. Ooh. Ooh. Some kind of lavender or something. Is that lavender? Is that taupe? Is, I don't know. Is taupe a purplish color? Is it? Does anybody know what taupe is? It's a color. Oh, ho, ho, ho. look at that. Yeah, we got the string containing that. So what's the problem here? It's still text content, right? So if you put in some HTML tags inside text content, you're going to get the text. What if li.innerHTML? What if we do that? So what happens if you set in HTML to just uh, text? That's basically the same thing as if you had just said text content. But if you put some HTML in there, it should make it the HTML. So let's see how that does. Where do we leave off back there? Uh, so these name tags are great, but they're way too low. Ian. Zinger. Nice bright blue. There we go. That's not too bad. That seems like a reasonable solution. We're still using inner HTML in one place, which is a little gross, but it also seems possibly acceptable for now. Render the color div correctly. Yeah, Bubba. So inside map here, we actually passed it another function. So this is a whole separate function. So when I declare li in here, li will be local to that function not render list. So if I try to get to li again out here, can't do it, right? Because that was declared inside this function. You dig? But look, I use list inside that function. This is a whole new function, but I was able to access list. Hmm. 
So how's that work? This is a concept called a closure. Um, basically the same thing as a lambda in, in some other languages. Also called a proc in some languages. But as a, as a general computer science term, it's, it's generally known as a lambda or a closure. Usually call them closures in j JavaScript. Um, but we call it that because functions enclose the scope of their containers. So if a function is inside, is declared inside another function, it will have access to all the local variables of that outer function. Not vice versa, but the inner can access the local variables of the outer. So we can use list inside this anonymous function here. And that's very convenient. We don't have to pass it in as an extra argument or anything like that. And we do this all the time. You dig? Remember this? The magical variable this? We looked at that very briefly yesterday. We said that inside an event handler, this was uh, always equal to the element on which the event fired. So like the form. Or if you clicked a button, it would be the button. It'll basically be the same thing as event.target. What about other places? What about inside render list? Or inside this anonymous function inside map? Let's see. Just for fun. Let's put a debugger in here. Remember that puts a breakpoint, so execution will halt when it reaches that line, line 22, which will only happen once we start mapping over things, which doesn't happen until we submit the form. So let's submit the form. All right, it paused. Here we are on line 22, and we can see our local variables inside that function. We have field name. We have the li that we built. Key is an i that were passed in. And we have this, and this is equal to window. Or it is a window object, I should say. But it is equal to the global variable window. Profoundly unhelpful. Most of the time, that's what this is. Most of the time, this is pretty much worthless because it's just the global object. You might think it would be equal to the containing function or something, but it's not. So let's look at some other ways that we could organize our code, and in so doing, we may stumble upon some other scenarios where this is equal to something different. I want this thing out of my life. Mm. This, okay. is, this is trouble. That's pretty stable, right? <laughs> They have insurance. It'll be fine. There, now I can see everybody. I just can't see Ivan's name tag. But I know it's Ivan, so. Okay, now I can only see him from the chin up. Oh, well. Traded one person for another. Okay. So right now, we just put all of these functions bare inside index.js. What if we organize these into some sort of something? If we were using a, a classically object-oriented programming language like Java, we might put them inside a class. In fact, we would have to, right? Everything has to be inside a class. JavaScript has classes, but they're not really classes. There's a keyword class, and it does a thing. That thing is not strictly the same as classes in classically object-oriented programming languages because 
JavaScript has prototypal inheritance, not classical inheritance. And we're not really going to get into what that means. But suffice to say, they don't really behave like classes. Still, they give us a way to organize our code. We'll look at a couple different ways to organize our code. Um, <coughs> and since we are looking at a couple different ways, that means everything I do, I'm going to undo. So drive yourself crazy if you try to type along with this. Um, but I will, I will commit all of the uh, interim steps here. So you will have it. So what if we just put this whole darn thing inside mm, another function? You can put functions inside functions. They're just kind of like local variables, right? So what if I create a function to contain all of this stuff? I want to indent this. So I'm going to highlight all these lines. And on a Mac, I'm going to hit Command right bracket on Windows, Control right bracket, and that indents. Left bracket, unindents. This is one you will want to know. You may have already used some other editors that do the same thing. OK, neat. What's it complaining about? Identifier expected. Yeah, sure, whatever. We can have anonymous functions. I don't know what your problem is. Um, let's go ahead and wrap this whole thing inside uh, parentheses. That seems safer. All right, great. Now it's all wrapped inside a function. So what have I achieved? They're not global variables anymore. Now they're local to that function because every time you declare a function, that creates a new scope, right? Even if you're using var instead of const and let. So is this going to work? Problem is, we're never actually running this function that's containing all these things. So none of this is actually going to get executed. But we can just run it as soon as we declare it. We can just throw open close parens around that, or after, outside the parentheses there. So inside the parentheses is a function. And then we just call that function right in place, even though it's anonymous. That's legal. Let's see if it works. Bef before I refresh the page, let's notice that I have person form available as a global variable in the console. I can get to it even though I'm not inside any of my other functions, right? If I refresh the page, I can't. Not defined. It's defined inside here, but it only lives as long as that function is executing, because now it's local. But does it still work? Can you hold up your name tag? There's no hope of my seeing that. No, not behind you. I didn't do you either, though, did I? All right, fine. I meant, yeah, let's go ahead and. Yeah. <sighs> Everyone's holding it. William, all right. William with the gray hair, even though he's only 17, still works. All right, because we execute this function, these things do get created. And most importantly, the event listener does get added. Cool. Now, there's a name for this pattern when you do it this way. It's called an iffy. I-I-F-E. Immediately invoked function expression. So it's a function expression, a function declared with the keyword function. And we invoke it immediately with the open closed parens. An immediately invoked function expression, or iffy. And the truth is, in ES6 and later, we don't really use these a whole lot because the entire point is to keep from creating global variables. And all we have to do to create a new scope for variables 
is put them inside some sort of block. It doesn't have to be a function anymore. It can be any kind of block. In fact, it can be as little as just, well, let's, I promised you I would commit these interim steps, so let's do it. Wrap everything in an iffy. But to create a new scope, all we actually have to do is wrap it in curly braces. That's a block. And since we're only using constant let, that's adequate. Refresh the page. Yeah. Um, <coughs> here's one fairly simple example. If you're using third-party libraries and one of your variables happens to share a name with one of the variables in that library, you're going to have conflicts. And if you know what, variable, what libraries you're including, you can avoid that. But if you include two different libraries from two different people and one of them didn't bother to scope their variables and used a bunch of global variables, then there's a fairly decent chance that they're going to reuse a variable name, especially if you're Variables have names like form and name. So you run into trouble if you start pulling multiple JavaScript files into a single project, um, all of which use global scope. You're going to have conflicts with your variable names. It doesn't have to get very complicated before that starts being a problem. All right, so I refreshed. Now that I just have this block, can I get to person form? Nope. So we succeeded in not creating a bunch of global variables. Do we succeed in making a thing that works? We'll use Devin this time. It worked. Beautiful. So that's another way we can organize this. And for our purposes, that's probably the most sensible thing to do because we're just trying. This is a pretty simple project. Um, and we're just trying to avoid creating global variables because we're good citizens of the Earth and the web. Let's look at one more way of doing it just for the sake of learning a little bit more about how objects and functions work. What if this whole thing were in an object? We'll allow ourselves a single global variable. We'll call it const capital A app. And it'll be an object. Now inside an object, you just have key value pairs. You can't just start declaring variables. So instead, what we could do is instead of saying const person form equals that, we could say person form colon that. You get it? Key value. Render color. Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't save. I promised I would save. Wrap everything in a block. Um, this one might be slightly involved, so let's go ahead and take our break. Take a 10-minute break. Come back. Cool.